Hello music fans and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dark Helmet and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, I think I'm going to call this segment Critiquing the Critics. And we're just going to go back in time a little bit. We're going to check out some of the critic reviews of some earlier Queen albums. Uh, the critics have always been pretty harsh on Queen, both the British and the American critics, probably for different reasons. Uh, but no, the Queen was never a band that the critics liked very much. I think critics generally are... I mean, I don't want to call them music snobs, but I mean, what other word can you use? I think they all had ideas of what rock music was supposed to sound like or, you know, whatever their favorite band was. Uh, everything should sound like that. I, I don't know. I don't know why. I, and perhaps sometimes people just like controversy because it draws attention to their name and they don't necessarily mean what they're saying. So we're going to start off this one with one of my personal favorite critical reviews and this one comes from Rolling Stone magazine and it was for the album Jazz and I think this is the good one to start with because this is really this was par for the course which you would get for Queen it didn't always start out that way like early early uh, critic uh, reactions to say the first Queen album were overall pretty good actually uh, it wasn't until the band really started getting some popularity right around the, well, right around Bohemian Rhapsody time, actually, the critics really started to get really annoyed. And I remember when um, We Are The Champions uh, came out, and I remember that, yeah, they were, they were really harsh on that. They didn't like the idea that Queen would dare announce themselves uh, the champions. And they just had no concept of what the song was about, no concept about the relationship between the band and the fans. And that's really what, kind of made critics just kind of fun to poke fun at because they were oftentimes out of touch all the while they're thinking that they're the ones who are kind of driving the narrative and it's just like you know this uh, fans more often than not um, would give critics basically the middle finger salute uh, a lot of the time and it wasn't just queen i mean uh, critics had their favorite bands and everybody else they would just crap on so i just want to do a little segment where we can reflect back on some of the things that critics had to say about the band and kind of share some laughs together and and perhaps they had some real good criticisms and and we can dig into that a little bit and talk a little bit about it so i really hope you enjoy this segment i look forward to bring it to you um i want to call like i say i want to call it critiquing the critics but if any of you have a better idea of what we could call the segment i'd love to you know i'd love your input um and yeah so let, let's go uh i'm gonna i'm gonna be reading it off my phone because i can't possibly remember uh, i sometimes can't remember my own birthday let alone an entire article that a critic wrote so I'm going to go to my phone here. I was going to do it on my screen in front of me, but uh, because it's on white background, it's just, yeah, I mean, basically I disappear into this uh, blizzard of whiteness. So we're going to go off the phone here. And uh, this particular article is from, again, it's from Rolling Stone. It was written February 8th, 1979. Um, it even says the time here, approximately five in the morning. So either this guy was up late and uh, had way too much coffee or he's a grumpy SOB and it was too early in the morning for him. But David Marsh, um, this one's for you, my friend. Uh, this is from the um, album Jazz. So let's let's see what let's see what uh, the wise David Marsh has to say about uh, Queen. There's no jazz on Queen's new record. In case fans of either were worried about the defilement of an icon. Really? Like, it can't just be called, like, all that jazz or just kind of jazzy fun. I mean, it doesn't have to be about the music genre. I don't know, David. What do you think? Ay, ay, ay. I'm, I'm, I'm one sentence in. I'm already annoyed. Not really. I'm having fun. Okay, let's go on. Queen hasn't the imagination to play jazz. Queen hasn't the imagination, for that matter, to play rock and roll. Interesting. Uh, I kind of thought, yeah, I think I, th I think they hinted on jazz a little bit, and I think they did a pretty damn good job on it. But anyways, David, let's go on. Uh, jazz is more of the same dull pastiche that dominated all of this British supergroup's work. Tight guitar, bass, drums... Heavy metal cliches, light classical pian pianistics, four-part harmonies that made the four freshmen sound funky, and Freddie Mercury's throat-scratching lead vocals. Another thing I notice about critics is 
when I was young, there was this guy, well, he's still around, a, a guy named Ted Nugent. And, and you could tell when you were listening to this guy, he's a bit of an idiot. But he liked to use as big a word as possible. It's almost like he'd like read the dictionary in the morning, pick out a word and, and, and go out of his way to try to use it in that day. I mean, I guess on, on the surface, it's OK because you're trying to expand your vocabulary. But what often happens is you end up using, you know, misusing words and coming across sounding stupid. I mean, in this guy's case, he's using words properly, but he's coming across as a bit of a douche, right? Nobody wants if you're trying to communicate with people, you have to speak in a language that people can understand and accept. You don't have to use big words in every opportunity, but that's uh, critics being critics. Let's go on. Anyway, it shouldn't be surprising that Queen calls its album jazz. The guiding principle of these arrogant brats seems to be that anything Freddie and company want, Freddie and company get. Yeah, that's what you get for being a superstar. Uh, what's mis disconcerting about their arrogance is that it's so unfounded, really. Led Zeppelin may be as ruthless as medieval aristocrats, but at least Jimmy Page has an original electronic approach that earns his band some of its elitist notions. The only thing Queen does better than anyone else is express contempt. It's interesting because you think leading up to jazz, I mean, was there really that much contempt in their music? I mean, half their music were love songs written by, Fre by Freddie Mercury. It's just interesting. Let's go on. Take the LP's opening song, Mustafa. It begins with a parody of a, a Mazanin. I, I I know what it I know what it is. It's the guy who announces the um, the uh, call to prayer in Islam. Although I, I've never been able to pronounce the word. I've seen it before. I know what it means. I just don't know how it pronounces. Muzanin. Muzan. Muzanin. Anyways. A uh, parody of Muzin's shriek and dissolves into an approximation of Arabic music. Well, it's supposed to be an approximation. See, this is, it was, I mean, the song is a little bit Arabic. I mean, it's got r some real words in it, but it's supposed to be gibberish. It's, it's supposed to be fun. Like, Queen never took themselves so seriously. The Queen, the critics seem to want to take them seriously all the time. It's like, can't people just have fun with music? I love Mustafa. First time I heard it, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I loved it because it's just so different. And that's what Queen, that's what made Queen so special is they were different. But being different, the critics didn't like. You had to fall into their lane. If you didn't fall into their lane, you went outside of it. There must have been a problem with you, not them, right? Crazy, absolutely crazy. Uh, this is part of Queen's grand design. Freddie Mercury is worldly and sophisticated, a man who knows what the muezzin sounds like. More to the point, you don't. What trips the group up, as usual, is the music. Mustafa is merely a clumsy and pretentious rewrite of Hernando's Hideaway. Hernando's Hideaway was just kind of like quirky, kind of almost Latin sound. So I'm not entirely sure what he means here. I mean, Hernando's Hideaway was kind of clumsy. But um, yeah, I think I think the whole idea of Mustafa was to be a little bit pretentious, perhaps. Why be so insulted by it? Anyways, um, it's merely a clumsy and pretentious rewrite of Hernando's Hideaway, uh, which was about as much to do with Middle Eastern culture as street corner souvlaki. And again, was it supposed to be about Middle Eastern culture? I mean, the the lengths that the critics would go to trash a band like Queen was like they are literally making stuff up. I don't think the band ever. In fact, I know the band never said to take them seriously. I'm pretty sure the band always said just have fun with our lyrics, have fun with our songs. That was the whole idea. It was just about having fun. But it's easy to ascribe too much ambition to Queen. Fat Bottom Girls isn't sexist. It regards women not as sex objects, but as objects, period. The way the band regards people in general. Like, how does he know this? Like, how does he think Queen treated people as objects? I mean, when you're in the music industry, I mean, there's a certain amount of objectivity that just goes with the industry. But that had nothing to do with Queen. Is From... All I've understood is Queen was one of the most respected bands out there by other bands. They treated people exceptionally well. So I don't know where this guy gets out, gets away with calling them, um, you know, pretentious and treating people uh, with disregard. 
Anyways, when Mercury chants in, let me entertain you about selling his body and his willingness to use any device to thrill an audience, which is true, he isn't talking about a sacrifice for his art. He's just confessing his shamelessness, mostly because he's too much of a bore to feel stupid about it. Really, David? I don't generally like to slap people <laughs> so David please give yourself a slap whatever it claims Queen isn't here just to entertain this group has come to make it clear exactly who is superior and who is inferior its anthem we will rock you is a marching order you will not rock us we will rock you oh how pretentious of them indeed Queen may be the first truly fascist rock band. The whole... Th like... I know what the title of this one's going to be. Uh, the whole thing makes me wonder why anyone would indulge these creeps and their polluting ideas. Like... Okay. The end. So, like, what happened, David? Like, why... Why... Why so angry? Like, was, was that really necessary? Like, even if you're critiquing an album, I mean, how many songs does he touch on here? Mustafa, which is probably the, the, the one song on the entire album that you shouldn't take seriously. I mean, that's obvious. It's just... And, and then he touches on um, Fat Bottom Girls. Yeah? And that's it? I mean, there was some... Oh... Let me entertain you. Yeah, so he touches on a small fraction, and then he sums it up using a couple of songs uh, from the um, or a song from the uh, the previous record. I mean, what what are you critiquing here? Are you critiquing the album, or are you critiquing your opinion of Queen as a whole? And this is just something that the critics did so often with Queen through the years. I remember one particular picture. I think this one was in Cream, maybe New Music Express. I can't remember, but there was a picture there of Brian and he kind of had his hand on his hip and his hand out on the guitar and the little caption they put under it, and I think I've mentioned this in one of my other videos, it's really stuck in my head, is how can I play it if it's all icky? And it's just like, what? Like, it's not funny. It's not witty. I mean, why? Why? It's just, it's just so bitter. And that's really what drives critics, I think. They, they just want to be controversial. They just want to be the one that everybody points at. as if. And I think it just truly feeds their ego. I, I, don't, I don't think they give a darn uh, what they say about an album. They just want to get, like, I would call it clickbait, but clickbait didn't really, you know, it didn't happen. There was no internet back then. You would read it in a magazine, and that was it. So, I, I, yeah, I can't understand why there is so much hatred for the band Queen. Uh, hang on a second. Let me retract that a little bit. I do understand. I mean, people don't like people on top. There's always going to be haters, no matter what. Uh, once you become successful, uh, there is going to be a percentage of people that will trash you, no matter what. And I think when it comes to North America, there was a real sound that was in America at the time. Uh, you know, like bands like Steely Dan or uh, Aerosmith or the Eagles. I mean, there was a real American rock and roll sound. And, and, and they didn't always take too kindly to British artists. You know, it wasn't like today. You know, today it doesn't matter where you're from. If, if you have a good song and a good peep, people are going to listen to it. That's, it's, it's no problem. But back then there was a certain amount of arrogance, like the, you know, the, the music on this side of the water is superior to the music on that side of the water. This is like real petty, petty stuff. And, and this is kind of what led. I mean, you just, you get critics who think they, you know, they're above the music they're listening to. And I'm not just saying a critic needs to love everything that he comes across. But when you start calling like, a song fascist because it's called we will rock you i mean come on man like fascist has a real connotation to it and this guy just seemed to think queen was just like i don't know if i if i if i'm gonna have to start using some swear words if i continue going with this one so this is a very brief this is an idea i have in my head so if you guys enjoy this one 
um, let me know in the comments. I'll keep doing these. Uh, it's not just Rolling Stone I want to touch on. There was all kinds of magazines at the time that would have their shots at different bands. And Queen was always one of their favorites. And I think that's because Queen was just never in the box they wanted them to be. And that's why we love Queen so much. Because they wouldn't sit in your box. I don't care. I love them for who they are. I love them because they're diverse. And I love them because the critics hated them. What do you think about that, critic? Anyways, um, here I am critiquing the critics, uh, episode number one. I hope you enjoy this one, and uh, until the next one, uh, we'll see you then.